Good evening. As I said, my name's Carol Ann, and I help women to create momentum in their business by actually helping them be more productive with their writing, which actually, more importantly, they experience free-flowing writing, which <coughs> actually engages with their reader. <coughs> Why I can help. How did that come about? My daughter, age 15, going on 16. I don't want to sit my exams. I'm going to fail them all. She was angry, rebellious, and not the little girl that I knew. I didn't know how to help her. I had a one minute conversation with an educational kinesiologist, brain gym consultant. I explained to him what I was observing with my daughter. He said, I can help. I went, great, book me an appointment. From the January to the May, she let me sit in on all the sessions with him. Most of the time I'd come out in tears because of the changes that were happening. It's like my daughter came back to me. She became more confident, happy. She sat all of her exams and she passed them all. Went on to do a, a GMVQ and a year later said to me, Mum, I wish I could do my GCSEs again because I know I could do better. Well, I just had to find out more about brain gym and educational kinesiology. What was this that he used with her? And it took me on a journey, personal development. I started training in brain gym, NLP and various other techniques, discovered other techniques as well. And <clears throat> there's my daughter now, well, was a few years ago. Sorry, wrong one. <laughs> but why writing? Why do I help people with their writing now? I was a math teacher. I didn't like writing. I, did. I hated writing. I hated words. Numbers, maths. Oh, I loved it. My students used to think I was mad. But I discovered brain gym. I started finding inside of me something and then one day I heard this voice I was going oh yeah now how am I gonna pay for that it was something I was looking at it's like two or three million you know yeah right you're gonna write a book what me no 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 what do you mean I'm gonna write a book how on earth can I write a book I can't write well I can I can write but I hated writing I hated words they never cooperated. Numbers, they were my friends. They cooperated. They did what I wanted, but not words. So it sent me on this journey, this quest, because in my head it was like, okay, yeah, what, what could I write about? How could I write it? Who would I be writing it to? Da, 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 da. So literally, I had to find an answer to it. And so, I started training in all those other techniques and started to find myself unlocking the writer within. About 12 years ago, probably 13, 14 years ago now, I actually sat and passed an English language A-level, something I thought I was not capable of doing. So words have started to become my friends. So what I'd like to share with you this evening is three key ideas. And the number one resource that you have, you all have, that will help you to move beyond one of five scenarios you may find yourself in, that will help you to create momentum in your business. <coughs> These scenarios. You've been told 
you ought to write a book. And you're thinking, why would someone tell me to write a book? You've got an idea or ideas of books, but that's as far as it's gone. They stick in your head. You've perhaps started a book or even several books, but they're not finished. Did you know that 97% of people that start a book never, ever complete it? Are you one of those 97% perhaps that might like to be one of the 3%? Perhaps you believe you can't write a book. Well, that stops you right there. If you've got a belief you can't write it, that's it. You're unaware, or perhaps you don't even believe, that you have a story or message inside of you. Or maybe there is some other reason. How many of you can re relate to one or any of these? Yeah. So what I'd like you to do on the sheet that was on your chair <coughs> at the top there, you'll see numbers one to six. Just circle one of them, or even more if it applies to you. Anything of those that actually apply, just circle. And if it's something else, just circle number six and write other. So any one of those. Maybe it's several of them. Okay. So. Or if they haven't got a sheet, maybe you've got a piece of paper, just write the number down. So this brings me to my key idea number one. And that is, there is an important reason for writing a book. What is that? <coughs> Why a book? Well, firstly, if you're speaking, you could have it at the back of the room. Something that people could buy afterwards. But also, it actually, it is something that is out there. It's got your ideas in it. What you have to say. <coughs> it tells people about what you do. Very often you get asked, what do you do? And you have to then explain it. Well, a book is already out there. So people who don't know you suddenly get to know you. Your book is the title deed to your micro niche. As Daniel Priestley says in his book, he's got about becoming a key person of influence. The second step in becoming a key person of influence is get published, write a book. It helps you become credible. People look at you in a different way. You think of people in your industry or that you know that have written a book compared to someone else who hasn't written a book. Who would you tend to go towards? Who would you think may know more about their subject than the other? It might not be true, but that person that's written the book, how many of you think that that person perhaps knows a bit more than the other one that hasn't written the book? Yeah. So you start to become a, look seen as a person of authority. Also, your big business card. How many business cards do you get that you just throw away? You put them in a pile and they stay there. A book, do you throw a book away? Or do you maybe put it down? It's there. Or you pass it on. Yeah? It's got your details in there. 
for people to come and find you. So what I'd like you to think about, question, what would a book do for my business? What would a book do for my business? Just think about that question. And if you all got, there was some paper outside, did you all pick up some paper? Or if you've got your own notebooks, just write down, what would a book do for your business? Maybe you're in a job. Consider that a book can be used with your CV and put forward to somewhere that you're applying for a job. Whose application do you think would stand out? Just an ordinary CV or someone who's got a book with their CV? Who do you think might then have more chance of getting that job. Okay, so just a thought. Where would it take your business? So that takes me to my next key idea. You all have the ability to write a book. Really, you say? I've got the ability to write a book, but you don't know me. I'm not saying that you can write a book or you could write a book. I'm saying you've all got the ability to write a book. You've all got the pen there in your hand. You've all just written on the paper. So you can write. What maybe stops you are beliefs. That you have. It's also that maybe those skills have not been developed. But it doesn't mean they can't be developed. Get some more training to write that book, but you have the ability. Where do the beliefs come from? Where do they come from? We'll look at that in a minute. What I'd like you to do now is think about what do I believe about my ability to write a book? Just ask yourself that question and then just write down what do I believe about my ability to write a book. And what is stopping me? Just ask yourself that question. What is stopping me? I said about beliefs. Where do they come from? My granddaughter, age six, came home one day. I am not a good speller. I can't spell. Where did that come from? I looked at her spellings. Most of them were right, but they've been marked wrong. Why? Because some of the words didn't fit. They were slanting, they were off the line, they went below the line. Some of them had capital letters in, but they were actually spelt correctly. Dealt with those issues with the teacher. And then had to support my granddaughter, because as you can imagine, that would have stayed with her, because as far as she was concerned, she couldn't spell. 
didn't matter that I was telling them they were correct. So I did range imbalance with her, did some work so that she could get 10 and 10, 10 out of 10 out of her spellings. She was happy. She was getting her spellings correctly. All of a sudden, that's fine, that's done. I'm a great speller. And she was able to move on. So maybe there's something that happened to you. I wonder if you can think of anything. Or maybe it's forgotten because it's so buried that it's forgotten. And you've no idea about it. It's still there. So again, I wonder what is stopping you from writing. What beliefs do you have about your writing? So now, go on to key IP number three. You all have a story or a message inside of you. Really, you might say? Really? Some of you might not have an idea. What have I got that would be of interest to anybody? Well, it doesn't have to be a huge story, a big story of pain and anguish or overcoming something. Can we just small piece of information that actually changes someone's life. All of, that that educational kinesiologist said to me was, I can help. And from there on, things changed. You never know what you might say that would inspire somebody, something that you've been through or some bit of learning that you've learned and shared with them. I was six years old in the, the infant school. The teacher was asking me to share some news. So what news have you got to share? And I stood in front of the class and I'm stood there. No idea what to say. And she kept on asking me, what news? Go on, if you must have some news. And I, I don't know. So have you got a brother? Yeah. So what's his name? Peter. So have you got a sister? Yeah. Well, what's her name? Susan. Oh, so you've got some news then. And off she sent me packing to my chair. And I'm going, I don't, I was confused. And it left me confused for most of my life that I didn't understand what happened. And it wasn't until a few years ago that I suddenly understood what that word meant. It's just some piece of information that somebody doesn't know. All of a sudden I went, oh my goodness. Probably all those other children in that class didn't know I had a brother, didn't know I had a sister, didn't even know what their names were. But I knew it, so it wasn't news to me. So I didn't understand how could that be news to them. So maybe there's something that you've got, a little story, a little message that you're not aware of. You would actually share it to someone else because they don't know. It may be some learning that you've you've taken and you assume that everyone else knows it. It's not true. Not everybody might know that piece of information or that bit of learning that you've got. So as Daniel Priestley says, you are already standing on a mountain of value. Your story is valuable. Your experience is unique. You are waste. Waste. Sorry, my teeth. You are worth your weight in gold, just as you are. <clears throat> so, it's all right if I ask you to do a bit of an activity with this question. Are you up for shifting something? 
maybe some way of thinking. So first of all, are we all yes? Yeah, for it. Okay, good. Let's shift something. What story have I got that I could share? Just ask yourself that question. And then I'd like you to write down, just write anything that comes to mind. What story have I got that I could share? And notice what's going on in your mind. What are your thoughts? How are you feeling? How easy do you write something? And just write anything that comes to mind. Just write it down. And also just notice if you, is there anything you've written down? It doesn't matter. However you are right now with this is perfect. Okay. <coughs> so now what I'd like you to do is the back of one of these sheets of paper. Let's see, just got some blank paper here. Grab a pen. In the power grip. Let's get the power grip. Hold it like this. Okay. <coughs> power grip. And then all I want you to do is just scribble. Just scribble. Go on. Let's see. Have a go. Scribble. In the power grip. Just scribble. That's it. But use the, the, your arm, feel your, the whole arm moving. Okay. Just use the whole, the whole arm. Whole arm. That's it. Move. It's not just a little movement. It's a big movement. <laughs> right. Change hands. <laughs> you have another hand. You have two sides to your brain. We only activate one. Let's activate the other. Power grip again. And scribble. The scribble. The whole arm. That's it. Doesn't matter what comes out. Okay. Now. Let's go back. That question. Ask again, what story have I got that I could share? And then now write again, just write something down. And just notice how your thoughts are, how you're feeling and what comes out. What story have I got that I could share? <clears throat> Okay, does anybody notice any difference? What was different? How did you feel? What were your thoughts? Anything different come out? Anybody like to share? Maybe the idea got quicker. Today. Sorry? This idea got quicker. Ah, the idea got quicker. <coughs> so it's more free flowing. It was quicker. Anybody else? I think I had a lot of thoughts going on. Uh huh. And when you draw out, it gives you enough documentation. gathers up the one that's really important. So that one that's really important was allowed to come to the surface so and come out. Wow. Thank you. Quite euphoric. I feel that. You see how it shifts? Ideas flow more quickly. Ideas come to the surface. A call for attention. Ones that we didn't think of. It also helps you go to that deeper level. And it's that deeper level that helps you to connect with your reader, with your potential client. <coughs> so 
So the number one resource that you all have. Anybody got any ideas what it might be? The number one resource that you've all got that's important about it to do with writing? Imagination is, we do have it. Pen and paper, but that's within you. What's within you? What do you all have? It's a story. I wonder what you use to put your story together. Words. You've all got words. You've all got your own unique way of saying something. And that's what will connect you with that potential client. With maybe that job interview within your book, because people read your words. It's your voice. It's got your resonance, not someone else's. Yes, it's okay to use quotes because that helps to emphasize something that you want to say and you can springboard from that. But ultimately, it's your words. It's the way you put something together. Tell someone about you. So imagine <coughs> that book got written. It's out there. It's impacting. It's making the difference that you wanted to in the world. Oh, yes. At last, I've done it. All of those ideas. That one came out and it got written. My book got completed. I know one of the 3% I've written my book. I'm making the difference I wanted to. Just imagine. And you're sitting there and your business is taking off. You're attracting success. You have a much more positive network around you. You have a passion back into your business. There's joy come back in your business and you've got more time to do what you really want to do as well as your business it's things that you're interested in that you haven't been able to do but it's not like that is it it really isn't like that. It's not written. Your heart is heavy because that book isn't complete. And just imagine you hear that song by Bonnie Tyler. Nothing but a heartbreak. Da, 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 da. The words get you when you're down. And you're down because your business isn't going anywhere. It's slowing up. And you just wonder, will I ever make it? I've done all this work. I've got all these ideas. Why, oh why am I not making the impact that I'm here to make? Well, guess what? Oh Lord, did that happen? <laughs> yes, it happened. I became an award-winning author. And what I have a delight to share with you on my journey of unlocking the writer within me, I have created a Let's Write program. So welcome to this program. <clears throat> Within this program, what I look at is, first of all, we do an MOT of your writing. What's so right now? How has it been for you? Where are you at? Baseline. And I'm sure you all understand what MOT means. <laughs> I've been speaking to people not in this country. They go, what do you mean MOT, sir? I have to explain that a bit more. But uh, I'm sure you get that. Secondly, a movie beyond writer's block. Limiting beliefs. What beliefs do you have? We bring them to the surface, we look at them and transform them. So you have more empowering beliefs. 
Thirdly, you learn to write freely. I'll take you back to basics when you first learned to write. Handwriting. I've realized there are steps that were missing. And we go through those steps. One of them is using that power grip and just scribbling. And there are some other things as well. So it helps you to then write more freely. How to freely express yourself. Consider there's an inner child who is still trying to learn to write. And then there's you who's writing to just so that other people can learn from you. And that's going on inside of you. So we work with that inner child so that she can make that transition or he can make that transition. <coughs> Tap into the emotions. Help you to go to the emotional plane. Because if you can write from there, that's where you then engage your reader because you connect with their emotions. If you can help someone connect with their emotions, you've got them. <laughs> so again, there's a potential client and why your why is important. Do the first five because then you can look at your why. Get that motivation back again. And then lastly, one that I nearly missed off in the beginning, they thought, ah, oh, completion. We overcome the blocks to completing your book. So how do I, oh, first of all, there's a few case studies. This lady I was, lucky to work with this is nine years ago this was before i was actually looking about writing i was actually just helping people move through their blocks she asked me if i could help her with writing and she got her chapter written and submitted in that book the chapter flowed it was all a mess before this lady she came on my six month program last march she wasn't getting her book completed. It just wasn't happening. She came on my six month program, went to one of my writing days. She has just completed her manuscript. She's finished the program, just completed her manuscript. It's now in for editing. She's absolutely delighted. And then Angela, who just thought writing a book was beyond her. She came to one of my writing days and she said, thanks to you. I no longer think that writing a book is beyond me and have renewed passion just to get on with it. So how do I deliver this Let's Write program? You've heard me mention a few things. First of all, I do monthly writing days. You might have seen on one of them that said, well, she thought, wondered how it was, thought maybe it was a bit academic. It's nothing like that at all. I might have been a teacher, but I'm nothing like a teacher when I do these writing days, believe you me. And Caroline can vouch for that, yes. <laughs> it's like, okay, we do activities and exercises and it becomes a joy because I've begun to find a joy in writing. Six month writing program consisting of 12 fortnightly group Zoom meetings. And you have access to two writing days. And then there's a 12 month writing program, which consists of 18 one-to-one -one calls and three exclusive writing experience days with me to support you on that journey. And you get access to the writing days as well. And I have a five day immersive writing retreat where you can really immerse yourself, get away from daily life and from work and really focus on your writing and have that cradle of emotional support to write what is there to be written. So if you would like to experience free flowing writing, you'd like to experience being more productive with your writing <coughs> and get your book written, then I invite you to book a free 30 minute exploration call with me, Carol Ann. You'll see on the sheet that you have where you circled it earlier. If you just like to fill in details, just put a tick. Say yes, please. And I would love to support you on your journey.
come and have a chat i should be here fill it in hand it into the bag or hand it into me and thank you so much for listening and i just hope you find joy with writing Now, I know Carolyn is going to be here for the Q&A, and we're going to have a break in a moment, but anyone who's heard me question and wants to ask Carolyn,